today we are working with birds and branches. We're making actually two cards. Somebody asked me for the, like I think it's book binding card. And so I have one in a vertical section and one in a horizontal. So we're gonna make these two cards today using the birds and branches stamp set. I did kind of one spring, one fall, the vertical, horizontal, just a little bit of everything. I'm just gonna die cut a few things using our birds and more dies. And if you noticed, I cut some garden green to make the greenery here. And we've got a little more greenery over here. And then I've got a white circle back there. I wanna get started on those. So I do have a circle from the layering circles dies. So this is using our stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's our die cutting and embossing machine. This was a request by one of our viewers. I always encourage you guys, if there's something you've seen and you want to know how to do it, definitely let me know. That's what I'm here for. And it's always helpful if you guys help me come up with ideas because I don't know what you want to learn and when somebody told me they wanted to learn this one I'm like really we can't just figure that out from the photos but <laughs> I guess that's just because I've been stamping for over 20 years I, I usually don't need video instruction for cards this simple but we're gonna do some fun stuff with it so stay tuned like I said we're doing two one vertical one horizontal this birds and branches stamp set has been around for a while it did carry over it's in our annual catalog we're here on page 108 and if you notice they have kind of like a shading behind them each piece that has shading behind it means that there's a die cut that's going to cut it out so there's no fussy cutting needed and with this case there's actually some extra dies that do not cut something out but allow you to cut and emboss a few birds. There's some decorative edging. There's this circle we're using on another card. Lots of really fun stuff. So here is our first card, and this is the vertical version. And what I did is I took a standard card base, eight and a half by 11, <laughs> scored at four and a quarter. And then I came over one inch from this score line and scored again. So this is at three and a quarter. Eight and a half by five and a half, scored at three and a quarter and four and a quarter. That's all we need for our base. Then I have a piece that is four inches by three inches for the inside. I have one for the outside that I've already gone ahead and die cut our shape out of. That's going to be for the front. And then yet a third one that is three inches by four. And so that's going to go on the front. I used our double oval punch to punch out a sentiment that we're going to use on our card. And this actually is from, this saying is from free as a bird. So we have another stamp set of birds. And so I thought I would use that as a sentiment since this stamp set does not have words with it. It's all images. But that's why I have several sets that are just wording because there's some great sets in our catalog that will have a little bit of everything, you know, a happy birthday, a thank you, a get well, you know, all in one stamp set. And I find those very useful for cards like this. Kind of trying to gently poke this out of its die. That's why there's these holes in the back so that you could use your take your pick tool to just poke out the pieces. And there's also a brush tip end you can put on the take your pick tool as well that also works great. Now this time around I did not, but you can also put adhesive sheet on the back before you die cut and it makes these pieces stickers. Oh, also for the front I have this piece of designer series paper and this is a three quarter inch by four inch. And then I had this leftover strip and just from cutting my pieces and I thought that'd just look pretty on the inside. So we're just gonna use that as an accent piece. So because it's skinny, I'm just going to use liquid glue because it's thinner than our seal and I don't want the sticky to be sticking out from behind. So just a very thin layer of the liquid glue and then I'm going to set this on top and it's just going to be an accent. So it's going to make the inside of our card blend with the outside of the card. If you've watched me before, you know I always decorate the inside of my cards. I just feel like it's not finished until I have that done. Can go ahead and adhere these. These are 
This designer series paper is called Beauty of the Earth, and it's a beautiful fall color designer series paper. I picked Mossy Meadow because it is one of the colors used in there. All of our designer series papers will tell you what colors are used in the making of it so you can match your ink and your cardstock to it very easily. That's my favorite part of Stampin' Up! is everything is color coordinated. My Mossy Meadow um, cardstock, ink, marker, they're all going to be exactly the same and they're always going to be the same shade and there's no dye lots. So, you know, normally when you go and get fabric or yarn or some other card stocks, there's a dye lot. And so if you picked up a green one day and you went back several months later, the green wouldn't exactly be the same. Ours are. And I love that about Stampin' Up! Okay, so see, these are just going to fit one on top of the other. And I'm double checking because there's a faint chance I may need to trim down one of the edges because I want it to make sure that it's not going to stick out from the edge. I want it fully buried behind there because it's just to show the wood through the back. And because it is so close, I'm going to go ahead and use liquid glue again for our wiggle room. So see how quickly this is going together? It's really simple to make and it's not that different from a standard card base, but yet it's something that not everybody is doing yet. And so it's something to still be simple yet be a little bit different. Yeah, I can't see the designer series paper from the back, so that's good. And I'm just going to adhere that on the front. So you can see from our score line here, I have the three inch on this side and the three quarter on that side. So I've got my border all the way around. The sentiment's going to go down here on the bottom. Now this time I'm adhering the wording to the oval and then the dimensions on the back. You can also do the dimensions between the two things. Just a different kind of a pop. Still works. I've already got our bird for this one stamped and die cut. I'm going to do the other one so you guys see how it's done, but I didn't want to keep you guys here forever. So I did a little bit of it ahead of time. And then I've got all this greenery and I kind of broke it off. I didn't need the whole thing, but I wanted some greenery to poke out from behind him. So I don't need that piece. And I've already cut some off here, you can see. Now, because I don't have the adhesive sheet behind it, again, we're gonna need some adhesive. And so you can either use your silicone mat and then use your seal, or you can put just little dots of the liquid glue back here. And you don't want too much because you don't want it to ooze out the edges. And then we're ready to set our bird on the top. And so I'm going to do that again with dimensionals. Now I could just go ahead and glue this together now. I mean, it's a perfectly wonderful card. I like it. But I wanted a little something over the edge over here. So what I'm going to do is take some linen thread. This is some left over from a paper pumpkin kit. So I'm just going to put some adhesive there just to stick this so it holds it down. And then I'm just going to start wrapping. And I'm not even counting. Everybody says, you know, how many times did you wrap it? It doesn't really matter. You just kind of want to wrap it till you think it looks good. So I think I'm happy with that. Okay, now this is usually more adhesive than I would normally use, but I want to make sure that this is good and stuck to the edge since that's going to open up. I want to be sure that sticks. And one of the things we can do with our seal to make sure that it sticks is just burnish it a little with the bone folder. And there we go. There's card number one. So what do you guys think? Do you have a stamp set or a bundle in mind that you would use this fold for? Then I have card number two, and this is done just slightly different. We're still using our birds and branches, but I'm going to do a little bit of stamping, and then we'll die cut those out. This is the nest that goes with our little bird, and we can stamp it in just one color, but I always say that I think it looks a little more natural if we tap on a couple other colors. And this is what we call thumping, and I'm going to show you how we do that. I'm going to go ahead and ink up our stamp with crumb cake as our base color. And then I'm going to take our 
Stampin' Write markers in soft suede and early espresso. And we're gonna give it just a little bit of thumping, which means I'm gonna take the, the cap off of the brush end and I'm just gonna tap it. And so I'm just giving it a very light wiggle from this end and then I'm moving the stamp around because obviously the twigs are not all gonna be in the same direction. And then I'm gonna take the second color and do the same thing. And then we're ready to stamp. And if you want, you can huff on it because the moisture from your breath will re-wet the ink, making sure that the ink is good and wet. And there's our nest. Now we just need our bird. Here's our two stamps for the bird. The one I used them on was the brown, so I'm just giving them a little bit of rub on the stamp and scrub over there, make sure they're good and clean. And then this is Misty Moonlight. And I've stamped our bird, but I'm gonna stamp him off, which means I removed a little bit of the ink and then I'm gonna stamp my cardstock. And this is what we call second generation stamping because it's just a little bit lighter. And I'm doing that because there's a second part to the bird and I'm gonna make him full strength. And so that's gonna give us a two-tone coloring. Now the trick is to line these up is to either use your stamp apparatus or look straight down from the top and try to line it up. There we go, not too bad. And so there's our little bird. And I wanted him to have a little bit of pink on his chest. So I just came in with a Flirty Flamingo Light Stampin' Blend and just gave him a little color on his chest. And this isn't necessary, I just I thought it looked a little prettier. You could also stamp the bird first, like in your base color. You could stamp that in a Flirty Flamingo and then do your Misty Moonlight over the top. And he would also have some pink on his wing, a little behind his head. Um, that's how I did the other one when I did this bird here. I stamped him in pale papaya and then put soft suede over the top. And so that just gave us kind of a different look to the bird to do him in two different colors rather than two of the same, just a second generation. So now I'm going to need the die cutting machine again real quick. And then I want to be sure that I'm taking the bird that has his tail up because there is another die for the other bird if you wanted the two of them to face one another. One would have a tail down and one would have a tail up. And there's even a little trick if you wanted them both facing the same way. We could do a mirror image stamping in our Stamparatus. And there's even a way to die cut it out. It's a little trick I can show you if anybody's interested, let me know. I have done that before. But for today's card, we're just focusing on the bookend idea. And I'm placing these and hoping that, you know, all goes for the best. But if you're worried that the die are not going to line up or that they're going to shift once you stick things on, you can use a little bit of washi tape to hold the dies in place so that once you lay down the plate, they don't shift. Just an option. Now I need my base. And so for this one, this goes the other direction. And so it's the same idea that I took an eight and a half by 11, I cut it in half and I scored it in half. Only this time the cutting was done the long way at four and a quarter, and then I scored it the five and a half. And then I came over one and a quarter. So when I scored this, this is at four and a quarter, five and a half, and it's 11 inches long. So that made this section here four and a quarter by four and a quarter which means my little pieces that go on it, I have a so saffron that's four by four, and then some of the hand penned designer series paper, three and three quarter by three and three quarter. And remember how I said this was one and a quarter inches? So this is four inches by one and three quarter inches by three and three quarter. So that's just gonna be some simple layering. I'm using the Stampin' Seal. And if you took a look at how I did that, some people complain they've had some trouble with the stamp and seal, but the trick is you want it to snap off up here at the top. So as I do it, I kind of flick over a little bit so that the break happens up here. Also, you wanna make sure that down here is clear of any little extra goobies because those will try to grab the piece that's running through and we don't want it to do that. So keep your case good and clean and then just do a little bit of a rollover as you snap it off. And it should be good. This check mark thing, that's kind of a 
a default I fall back on just by habit because that's how we used to snap off the fast fuse. I don't know if you remember that one. That was another adhesive we had that everybody loved, but it was made by another company. It was starting to get expensive. I don't know, for some reason, Stampin' Up! discontinued it, but they came out with Stampin' Seal and they have Stampin' Seal Plus. So we just kind of have our own customized version now. And this is better than the Snail ever was because it does stick better. And then the Seal Plus, it breaks off in little sections. It's got little tiny marks in it because it does not break off well because it's got such a good stick to it that it doesn't snap off easily. So that's why it's got the little pre-cut marks in it. So like I said, this is just some simple layering. And then we have our other pieces. We've got our circle. We've got some greenery. We have our nest. I have several little eggs over here if we wanted to add in some eggs. And now we're ready to start building our little scene on the front. I wanted to make him look like he was sitting in the sky. So I used some balmy blue ink with our blending brushes. Now I want to make sure that I'm tapping off on here before I come onto my circle because you can kind of see when I first started out with this it's a little bit harsh and I didn't want that harshness to show up on my paper. I wanted this to be much softer than this. So just start off and then roll on. That's really kind of all there is to that. So I'm going to go ahead and put my circle a little bit high because I want to leave room for our nest to go here. And I thought the nest should be sitting on a branch, right? I mean, it's not just floating in midair. It's got to be sitting on a branch. So we're going to put that across the bottom. And remember, all of these products can be purchased in my online store. And if you need help with that, definitely get a hold of me. That's what I'm here for. Unlike the big box stores, you don't just buy it and go home and hope for the best. You have me here to help you work with it and make the most of all of your product. Now before this totally dries, I'm going to stick my snips under there and pop off this excess. Now I'm ready to stick the nest down on top. These are the edges. I never throw away the outside edges of my Stampin' Dimensionals because they're still Stampin' Dimensionals, right? We can still use them. It's not like they go bad just because they're because they're an edge and sometimes they're even a better fit than the full dimensional and then for over the top i kind of you know, i guess i could use all of it wasn't so sure we needed that much greenery and this is all a matter of personal preference and then i'm ready to stick my bird in kind of want him on an egg but I want to make sure it's visible because there's actually three eggs under there and I kind of buried them and you can't see them so I'm going to make sure we can see this one so there's our little scene now the last thing we need to do is add our little bow on the end here so I used some of our this is actually pool party sheer ribbon I just kind of dug in my drawer and found something I thought would work and then I'm no good at tying bows, and so my husband made me this handy dandy little bow maker. And everybody always asks me about it, so he's made several, and I have them for sale on my website. But they make tying bows so easy. All we're going to do is we're going to cross this as if it was cancer ribbon, and then I'm going to feed this through the bottom. So I've got left over right, and then I'm feeding under the bottom. And then I'm going to pull it a little bit taut, and then I'm just going to make a knot. And that's it. Now we have our bow. Look at that. A perfect little bow. How easy was that? And of course the dowels move so you can make larger and smaller ones. But then I'm going to adhere it in here because this way we can bury the ends and make sure that they're not seen. And if they ever were to fray or, you know, start coming apart a little bit, it's on the inside, so it's never going to show on your card. And they're a little bit long, and I could just go ahead and seal them up, but I think I'm going to trim them off. I have a special pair of scissors that I use only for ribbon. It could be those kind of scissors if you have those, or it could just be a separate pair of snips. Maybe you want to put a different kind of bangle on the end of your ribbon snips. Maybe even tie some ribbon on the handle. But it's very helpful to have a different pair of scissors that you use for paper versus for fabric because it does dull them quite a bit to use them on the opposite material. 
Now again, I'm going really heavy with my adhesive because it's going to get movement. And then I'm going to burnish with the bone folder, make sure it's good and sticky. And there we go. There's card number two. So all we need now is a piece for the inside. And normally we do the four inch by five and a quarter. So I have a whole bunch of these already trimmed. But because this just needs a four by four, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off and then keep this because this would be a really good sentiment size for another card. And when I save all my little pieces, they go in these little Pendaflex folders. Everybody always asks, so it's Pendaflex 99849. And they're just work order pieces. But I, if I find if I keep all the same color together and I keep them with my large pieces, that I'm more likely to use them. Because when I reach into my garden green and I'm going for a full sheet, I might notice that there's a half a sheet in there that will work just fine and I won't need to cut into a brand new sheet. So there we go. So there are our two cards for today. Again, this is called a book binding card. And we did a horizontal and a vertical. So again, my name is Lisa. I'm with Queen Bee Creations. I invite you to pop on over to my blog and to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications so that you find out next time I go live. It's always going to be on a Monday at 2.30 and I hope to see you there. Thanks for joining me.